and let's dive in. Okay, so um, ratio test. Remember, we're checking limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n in absolute value. That's what the ratio test tells us to check, and if that goes to L, L less than 1, then absolutely convergent. If L is greater than 1, then divergent. If 1, we know nothing. All right. So what I did was I took the ends and replaced them with n plus 1s on top. And I got some weird thing going on inside here. That's not to a plus 1 power. That's n plus 1 raised to the n plus 1. 5 to the n over n to the n. Uh, so again, everything's positive. Invert the denominator and multiply. So I'm going to 5 to the, I'm just going to rewrite the numerator. n to the nth over five to the n. So what can we simplify out of this guy? Do what? Yeah, so this N of these cancel out with those in right there, so you're left with just the 5 to the first on top. Now what I'm going to do is the same thing we did up here. Um, well, let's see. This 5 to the, uh, sorry, these n plus 1 to the n plus 1. I want to put like the same powers together. i got an n to the n here. If I have n plus 1 here, then there's not much I can do there. But if I wrote this as this, Right, that's the same thing, right? N plus 1 times N plus 1 to the N is N plus 1 times N plus 1 to the N. These two are the same thing, the two denominators, right? Agreed? And the only reason I did that is so that this right here I could rewrite as just the same thing to the nth power. So this becomes the limit as N goes to infinity. 5 over n plus 1 times n over n plus 1 to the n. Now, do you recognize this? Or do you see anything, I guess, similar to what we've done before? Well, geometric, if it's constant inside... So I'm referring back to this guy up here that we were talking about before. This right here. It's almost the same, right? But it's flipped over. So in fact, that's exactly what you're going to get is what, what Kyle up here said, which is 1 over E. And the reason it's 1 over E is that this is the same thing as I'm going to replace with flipping the inside... and put a negative, and put negative in x bar. So this looks like limit as n goes to infinity of 5 over n plus 1 times, now, n plus 1 over n to the negative n. <clears throat> 
And so this looks like n plus 1 to the n all raised to the negative 1 is essentially what we have here. So what, what I'm, the point I'm making is that this all goes to 1 over e as n goes to infinity. Okay, so let's, let's take n going to infinity. What happens to this thing as n goes to infinity? Which means it goes to the bottom blows up, zero, and this piece over here goes to 1 over e. What does the whole thing then go to? Zero. Zero times 1 over e goes to zero. Okay. Less than one, which means convergent. So this is one more time where we saw the n plus one over n to the nth power showing up. Because it's a minus up here, you actually get this is e to the minus one or one over e. Whatever the number out in front of the n up here is going to be the power of whatever e is here. So that's why it's negative 1 right there. Right up here, it was just a 1 right there, so it's e to the first. Okay. But the, what's messy about this is that you have to still recognize that e in there. There's another test that actually would work even better on this one than the ratio test, and that's the next one, which is called the root test. <coughs> Root test works almost exactly the same way, except instead of taking the ratio of the n plus first term divided by the nth term, I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of the nth term. The nth root of the absolute value of the nth term, and it actually works the exact same way. If that goes to L, and L is less than 1, then the series is absolutely convergent which means the series a sub n is convergent and if the nth root of the absolute value of the nth term goes to l as n goes to infinity and that l is greater than 1 then it diverges and if it goes to 1 again we know nothing The root, te the root test usually only plays a role when you've got everything to the nth power so that the n power cancels out with the nth root of the test. Okay, So this one, I'm going to apply the root test, and it's an obvious choice for the root test because this thing looks like 5 over n to the nth power. If you can write it as your terms to an nth power. Notice it's close to geometric, but it's really not geometric because you don't have a constant inside, right? So it's really not geometric. But in this case, this thing that looks geometric, the root test will actually work. So limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute, so the nth root of the absolute value a sub n would look like the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of... I'm just sticking this inside here. 5 to the nth over n to the nth in absolute value. So I want to find out what is the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of 5 to the n over n to the n. So using the same reasoning as I just did up here, that, and this is positive so I can drop the absolute values, I have this as the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of 5 over n to the nth power. And again, clearly because everything's positive, 
the nth root and the nth power cancel, and you're left with 5 over n. Which goes to 0, which is less than 1, which means absolutely convergent. So this is an easier limit to take than we had to worry about with the ratio test on this particular example. Okay. Now I'm not going to do any more root tests. In fact, this next example is another ratio test. It's just another type of problem where the ratio test works really well. The reason I threw this in is just so you can see if you've got everything raised to an nth power, you've got another backup test like the ratio test only you're taking the nth root and then taking the limit as n goes to infinity. But the same rules for L apply. The last example that I want to do in this section, and then we'll be done with, uh, with the ratio and root test, is a special type of series where I've defined it in a different way. Instead of giving you a formula for the nth term, I'm giving you a recursive definition now, you've seen recursive definitions real briefly. We talked about them in 11.1. Uh, in All that means is instead of having a formula that depends on n, I have a formula where the, say, the n plus first term depends on the previous term. Notice how it depends on a sub n. So before I actually answer this question, just let's think about what does... The sequence a sub n from n equals 1 to infinity look like. Well, a sub 1 is 1. So a sub 2 would be sine of, notice this means n is equal to 1 right in the formula up here so I plug in 1 to get a sub 2 sine of 1 in absolute value over 1 times a sub 1 so just so you see this that's sine of n over n times a sub 1 or in this case a sub n a3 would be sine of 2 over 2 times, now you take all of this, stick it right there, sine of 1 over 1. A4 would look like sine of 3 over 3 times all of this, which means sine of 2 over 2 times sine of 1 over 1 times 1. That's how this formula defines your sequence A to look like. Our question is... If I go from n equals 1 to infinity, if I add all these things up, okay, converge or diverge? Almost always recursively defined series like this, the ratio test is your best bet. And the reason the ratio test is the best bet is because the ratio test is going to take this a sub n plus 1 and divide it by a sub n and see what happens as n goes to infinity. So let's use the ratio test. Again, the ratio test says, as n goes to infinity, let's take a sub n plus 1 
divided by a sub m. So what do I put in for a sub n plus 1? Let's use, yeah, use that formula right there. So absolute value is sine n over n a sub n divided by... Now, a sub n, I could use this formula to put n minus 1, n minus 1, n minus 1 here, but it makes more sense to just leave a sub n as itself because what do you notice happens? Cancel. So now we're doing the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of n over n. And I dropped the outside absolute values because I still have this inside making the top positive and n is always positive. So uh, this inside is always positive. Now the question is what does that do as n goes to infinity? Any ideas? Well, we're, right now I'm just looking at the limit of a single expression, so I'm not even talking about series right now. So think about this fraction. What's happening on top as n gets bigger? It, sine wave is stuck, right? So as I plug in integer values into the sine wave, I'm still bouncing back and forth, but I'm never getting very big, right? Because sine of something is always between negative 1 and positive 1. So the top stays between 1 and negative 1. What's happening to the bottom? It's blowing up. It gets really big, and as long as the top stays between negative 1 and positive 1, actually, because it's absolute value between 0 and 1, so it's going to 0. Because the bottom is blowing up, the top is stuck. The top stays small. And then the ratio test means if it goes to a number, you check that number, is it Less than 1 or bigger than 1, since it's less than 1, then it absolutely converges. So the series of the terms generated by this definition here will form a convergent series. That's how you might use the ratio test on recursively <clears throat> defined terms. All right, so that's 11.6.